Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video we will discuss this rather erroneous statement. First comes love, then comes marriage. It is actually the opposite. First comes marriage, then comes love. But before we begin this discussion, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen, Sayyiduna Muhammad, <coughs> Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen, Wa arda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een, Allahumma ameen. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد We begin in the name of Allah the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter We thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us for they are innumerable and we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his fellow companions Amen we also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his followers as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him and his followers those who believe in this statement are egregiously incorrect first comes sex or fornication then comes marriage and possibly first comes fornication and the bastard child then comes marriage love does not come until after marriage and we will demonstrate this through this debate there are exceptions obviously what is love baby do not hurt him no more Love is nothing more than an impulse. You could go on a date with a stranger and you enjoy that date immensely and your heart starts to skip a beat. That is love. It is an impulse, a moment. That is it. Because it is an impulse or a moment, it is fleeting. It is not permanent. Thus, you cannot build a decision on such foundation because there is no foundation if you as a female go on a date with an, a male and you enjoy that date and your heart skips a beat and you feel that you are loving that person what would be your decision oh let us uh, fornicate in the next date for example or the third date or the tenth date who cares and then I will ask him to move in together and then I will ask him to marry me and all of that stupidity. You built a fantasy on nothingness. It is an impulse. You do not even know the person. Because people in dates tend to hide the truth of their personalities and they hide it rather well too. They are on their quote-unquote best behavior. Thus, you cannot build a rational decision on matters of the heart. It has to be on matters of the mind. Logic, not emotion. That is why, if you wish to marry, marry the traditional, in the traditional manner. Where a man approaches the family or approaches the woman directly and shares his interest to marry, then if the woman is approached directly she relays that to her family and then the family meets with the prospective suitor or if the family is uh, uh, asked directly if that is the word asked directly then they would set an appointment to meet with the suitor and then they can uh, the suitor and the prospective wife would have a sh what is known as a chaperoned date though technically in Islam we do not call it a date but it is supervised to prevent anything inappropriate or improper once the two meet they discuss their ratiocination their foresight their vision for the future and the marriage if they feel that they are compatible then they marry well you might ask well where is the love 
baby, do not hurt him no more. The love comes after the marriage. How so? If the two are respectful to one another, are compassionate to each other, are honorable to one another, are generous in terms of emotions with one another, they are willing to sacrifice for one another, that is when this will be generated and it will be generated extensively. So the impulse becomes a series of impulses. That is, why, that is what marriage creates, a constant generator for love. In a woman's heart, I want to have the whole and not a part. Through that commitment, through that marriage, through that security, the love will co constantly be generated. And since it is constantly being generated through the marriage, it will never be fleeting. It will always exist, even in the moments of anger. When the two have a falling out or a disagreement, and after they have calmed down, each of them will remember all the good the other has done. I am speaking about normal people, not Western people. I am speaking about normal spouses. Western spouses, well, they have issues on both genders, males and females, to be quite honest. Though it seems that the females are more problematic in this day and age because of the agenda. That does not mean the males are inculpable. Yes, they are culpable as well. But from what I have seen and from what I have heard, it seems that the females are upsetting the scale at this point. <laughs> I saw a video about a female mother who was crying because her ex-husband is thriving and it triggered her. Again, the only person who would be upset by the sight of a locked door would be a thief. If she is triggered, that means she knows she made a mistake. But instead, even though she was crying, in, which is indicative of her stupidity and regret, she was trying to justify her actions arrogantly. Oh, but I have never felt peaceful, yet you are crying. And uh, I have never felt healthy, yet you are crying. If, if you genuinely did not give a damn, you would not be triggered. But that is simply indicative of her stupidity. And I say arrogance because she refuses to admit the truth. Instead, she is misleading other idiots such as herself. Instead of telling them, I regret my action, I wish to become his wife again. Oh no, do the same as I am doing, unfortunately. So now through that marriage, and I am speaking about normal people again, that love will constantly be generated. Thus it will never be fleeting as opposed to boyfriends and girlfriends, also known as used dildos and used condoms respectively, whom are beneath whores, because whores actually earn recompense for exposing their bodies to strangers, whereas boyfriends and girlfriends reap nothing, and then they break up a few months or even a few years later without any marriage. Yeah, first comes love. Of course it does. Anyways, and where did that love go? with the wind <laughs> anyways that is why you can marry someone you do not love and you can marry someone you love and then realize after the marriage that they are terrible people because through that relationship extramarital affair they do not reveal their true selves or try to hide it the best as possible because there is no commitment. That is why marriage is a contract, because it proves to each party involved that they are serious about this commitment. They will strive to make it work regardless of the difficulties, as opposed to abandoning ship at the slightest sight of trouble. 
through marriage you actually prove to each other that you are willing to preserve, maintain, and strengthen that bond that both of you share. But if you have a girlfriend, where is the bond? Nothing. Let us have sex and on some days, have romantic dinners on other days, and then break up on other days. <laughs> that is it. There is no commitment. There is no security. There is no safety. If I marry someone through the traditional means, firstly, I am proving that my intentions are sincere to the parents, to the family, and to the woman herself. That I do not simply wish to use you as a condom, and then once I am done, I will leave. Secondly, if I use the traditional approach, I am showing the wife that I am entering this lengthy process. It is not truly lengthy, but compared to boyfriends and girlfriends, obviously it is lengthy. That I am entering this process to show you that I am willing to commit and I am willing to endure and be patient and understand and listen and communicate with you to preserve that bond that I invested my effort and time and money into. That is the beauty of marriage and that is why it is considered a contract in Islam <clears throat> as Allah phrases it in the Quran, مِثَاقٌ غليظ. A contract that is, how should I translate غليظ? You could say strong, almost unbroken, or invincible, or impenetrable. Not that it cannot be broken, but I am referring to the fact that actually sacred or holy, that is the better that is the better translation. It is not the correct translation, but it is the closest translation. It is a sacred contract. It is a holy contract. <clears throat> and yes, people can make mistakes through marriage, but I have seen couples who had issues in their marriage, uh, whether the wife was seeing someone else or it, it, whether the husband was seeing someone else. And believe it or not, because they are essentially or fundamentally good people, they realized their mistakes and strove to become better people. And believe it or not, the marriage became stronger because of these issues. And I have seen it. It is not that as if someone told me about it. I have witnessed it in different couples before. And that is why marriage should precede love. If love was the sole decisive factor, once these issues happen, everyone abandons the ship instead of actually investing time to repair the damage. Or not even repair the damage, to remedy the damage to the point where you do not even see the scars of the damage or the impact of the damage. It is similar to that Japanese art style, I do not remember its name, where if a, a vase or a vase breaks, they melt the broken pieces together with gold to try and outshine the imperfection. It is a similar concept to that. Which brings me to this stupid part that you see on social media, where a male or a female always are excited to write the term, hey, I'm taken. Well, you should realize that firstly, you are not a piece of bread to be passed around. Secondly, what is taken can be given. <laughs> if your heart was quote unquote taken by someone, they can essentially return it or give it to someone else or give it to you who cares really. This, however, this shows that the person is willing to actually continue. And since you never see this online, you will never see that type of behavior. And I have seen many people ruin their lives online by saying, oh, I've, I have a girlfriend, she is amazing, blah, 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 even though they are Muslim. But they made the mistake. I will not hold the guillotine to them. 
and then uh, they realize uh, with uh, they are dating some sort of western bimbo and then they realize that she is an actual bimbo and i uh, i had this conversation with a few people i told them what you see in the movies and television shows is not the reality of these creatures they are not understanding they are not committed they are not this they are not that that is only in the movies it is a fantasy in reality these females are indoctrinated to the point where they think they are amazing simply because they are females they do not commit any mistakes because they are female and they are entitled to everything because they are westerners that is how they are raised to be selfish and that applies to males too Obviously, there are exceptions, I am not generalizing, but the standard is not built on the minority. It is built on the majority, which unfortunately is terrible at this point. And I, I probably do not even need to inform you. You have probably witnessed it where two people online were falling deeply in love. And then after a few months or a few years later, they break up and they probably even end up hating and cursing each other. Where, will did the, where did the love go? Because there is no commitment, there is no safety, there is no security, there is no honor, no nobility, no respect, no compassion, no mercy, nothing. Only sex. And that is it. That, that, that is why this does not continue to be generated. And that is, a, that is a huge problem. That is disastrous. This is irrelevant and irrespective of why marriages fail. That is a different story. Again, I am speaking about normal people. Normal people. And there are people in the West who are normal people that actually marry through traditional means and they have prospering marriages, thank God. I have also seen a book, I do not remember the author and I do not remember the name to be quite honest. But it caught my eye because in that book, the author, I believe she is co-authoring with her husband, but her husband had issues that led him to cheat. I do not remember what the issues were. He was spending time, too much time online, too much time with other women, I do not remember. But what caught my eye was that both of them worked on that marriage. And at least according to the author, God only knows if that is how she truly feels. I honestly do not know. But according to the wife, the bond became stronger. And I was surprised to see that because I do not expect that type of behavior from white people. Or I should not say white people because black westerners are just as bad as white westerners again not all of them obviously but westerners in general do not exude that type of mentality i have seen it with muslim couples and as i mentioned their relationships became stronger but because in islam marriage is governed by the legislations or the doctrines of god through islam I am surprised to see it in Western couples because I do not understand their standard. What is their standard for marital affairs? I do not know. Is it simply instincts? What God has instilled in all of us? They have not been indoctrinated or corrupted by society. Could be. I honestly do not know. <clears throat> but remember... You will never find love without marriage. And that is why you see many people complaining about their boyfriends refusing to marry them. Why? Because they receive everything a wife has to offer, which is sex, basically. And someone who... <laughs> someone who is... Uh, who provides company at home. That is... So why should they marry? What is the point of marriage at this point? He has taken everything from you, everything that is sacred, which is your body and your possibly your virginity. So what else do you have to offer him? Nothing. And that is why they do not marry. And to them, it is quote unquote cheaper too, because by Western law, marriages are 
disastrous for husbands, especially if the wife is easily corruptible. If a person whispers into her ear, she may divorce the husband, and then she concocts the reasons in her mind, and then she relays them to people, oh, he was abusive when in fact he was not. And I have seen many cases uh, for Western couples actually regarding that topic. So remember, it is first comes marriage, then comes love. You do not need love for marriage. If you are a good person, you will treat everyone righteously, justly, fairly, respectfully. You do not need to be loved to behave properly. And if you behave properly because you are loved, that means you are a despicable person. You are pretentious, nothing more. And you should never accept someone and then hope they will change. Because when you accept them, they will never change. Why should they change? Tell that person, change firstly. Then, once you have changed, I will gladly marry you. It is as simple as that. Whether they wish to change or not, that is a different story. But remember, and that this is, this is what is ruining Western societies. First comes sex, then comes marriage. No, first comes marriage, then comes sex, which they label as making love, and then comes the children. Instead of having bastards, have children. Why do you need bastards? And that is it for this video. I hope this lecture was helpful and beneficial to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen. إنك حميد مجيد